I work for the developer relations team at Research in Motion. And we've been doing a lot of uh, travel recently, recently um, talking to developers why BlackBerry is important and how, how and why they should be developing for BlackBerry 10. And I got a little confession to make. Um, I'm really excited to have this opportunity to speak about this BlackBerry 10 right here at home. That's everything that's happening around BlackBerry 10 in Waterloo. And today I'm here to talk to you about Cascade's fundamentals, and I'm also going to show you some real live demo of the sample application we have put out on our website. So before we get any deeper into Cascades, let me set the context right and tell you where Cascades fits into the BlackBerry platform. Cascades is the UI framework for those of you who will use native SDK as a development platform to build your apps. At the very down, down below, we have the BlackBerry 10 OS, which is based on the QNX real-time operating system. And right above that, we have all the platform and device-specific features, as well as BlackBerry Cloud services. And on the side, on, to the right, you can see there is a Qt core component. This comes from the Qt application framework, which is a mature C++ framework to build apps. Now, we didn't take everything, everything um, out of the box from Qt. We took only the core portion of it, so things like String manipulation APIs, for example, it's called QString in Qt. We didn't feel a need to reinvent those things. We just, we're just reusing a platform that is already matured. But where BlackBerry 10 really differentiates is when it comes to UI and user experience. So that's where BlackBerry Cascade sits on, right on top of Qt Core and all the platform and device services that we have. The BlackBerry Cascades platform redefines the UI we know it today. And we're going to see a lot of in-depth code, code snippets as well as live demos as we go through the slides. So um, can I get a switch back, please? I accidentally keep clicking on the clicker. All right, so what is Cascades? Like I said, it's the UI framework for BlackBerry Native SDK. And it comes with built-in good looks that has great looks out of the box without you having to do anything. It's extremely easy to prototype and develop UI using Cascades. The way I would like to put it is it's only as hard as coding HTML because Cascades has a markup language called QML that allows you to do that. And everything in Cascades, there is a core principle of flow. Everything you see on the screen should be animated. There shouldn't be any jumps or any friction caused to the user as the user uses your application. And all those animations are done implicitly for you without you having to do any hard work to do that. Click the clicker again, sorry. Can I get a switch back, please? I'm supposed to click it only when I need a switch to the device, but I keep clicking it to change my slides. Sorry about that. So Cascades also comes with the core controls that you'll possibly need while developing your application. The anything starting from a button to a slider to check boxes, radio buttons, switches, text areas and text boxes, you name it. Almost everything you need is right there out of the box as a core control. But hey, we still know that there are some of you who still need something that is not there. And for that, we have, we have made Cascades in a way so that you can create your own custom components using the core components or on top of the core components and reuse them as many times as you want in your application. Cascades also comes with a super easy to use layout system. We've, we've seen a lot of layout systems, and we've come down to two major layout systems. One is the stack layout, and the other is the dock layout. The stack layout allows you to stack your components either vertically or horizontally, whereas the dock layout lets you 
dark components relative to the screen's edges or the center of the screen. So using these two layouts, you can literally, you can literally create any layout system in your UI as you wish. But there is still some application that needs a bit more flexibility than that. That's why Cascades comes with its freeform capabilities. Not only you can extend core controls to create your own custom control, you can put any control in your application anywhere you want on the screen, literally at any pixel. That's enabled by the absolute layout system of Cascades. But one note or caution about absolute layout, it's not a good idea to use that because once you, if you want to support multiple device screen sizes, then absolute layout might not cut it because your application might be totally off on a new screen size. So try to use stack layout and dock layout as much as you can and only use absolute layout when you absolutely need it. That's why it's named absolute. So here is a quick code snippet that shows a Hello World sample. And as you can see, the whole point for putting it up there is to show you how easy it is to create Cascades UIs. All you need to do is use the markup language called QML. And in this case, we're creating a page, which is basically a screen in our application. And then as the content, we have a single label, which is, which, that, uh, the text of which is set to Hello World. And that's it, that's our Hello World application. Not a single line of C++ code is required for this, but you can do it all in QML. Now you can also do the same thing in C++ if you choose to do so. If you're more comfortable with C++ and you want everything to be in C++, that's your choice, and we provide that. So the same UI is created using C++, and in, in this example, we're creating a page, we're creating a label, setting a text to Hello World, and setting the content of the page to the label, and finally pushing, it, pushing the page onto the screen. And finally, this is what it looks like on a real device. So that's just to give you a feel of what Cascade's UI development looks like. Now, Cascade's also comes with a great event handling mechanism. So when it comes to event handling, Cascades uses something called signals and slots. The signals and slots concept is nothing new to Cascades. It's actually borrowed from the Qt application framework. So those of you who know about the observer design pattern, or those of you who know about the Java listener mechanisms, this is exactly the same thing. Think about signals and slots as your sprinkler system. If you have a fire alarm connected to a sprinkler system, when the fire alarm goes off, the sprinkler system gets a signal, in this case, the sprinkler system is a slot, so it executes and pours water all over the place, and hopefully causing more damage than the fire itself, right? Um, and in a real example of Cascades, if you have a button, it can have a click signal. All you need to do is connect that signal with your slot. In this case, we're connecting to the slot called reset value of the slider component, but you can connect it to any function you want in your application. And once that connection is made, whenever that signal, signal is emitted by the button, your slot will get executed. And the, all of these are done asynchronously. So bottom line is Qt is the application framework in C++ for Cascades applications. And Cascades really loves Qt. It must love Qt, otherwise they wouldn't be on top of each other, right? And, oh, you guys are so bad. I did not mean that. <laughs> All right. So it is an extremely mature C++. The reason why we used Qt, or Qt core portion of Qt, is because it's a very mature C++ application framework. And we didn't want to reinvent something totally new and, you know, force you to learn that, right? So it's something already familiar in the market and already familiar in the, between, among developers. It provides good core APIs, such as string manipulation, network connectivity, and you name it. It provides a great event handling mechanism compared to what you'd have to do otherwise in C++ via signals and slots. 
And it also has many helper classes. And the best part of Qt is that it also gives Cascades the markup language called QML. Now, QML allows you to write your UI almost like you're writing plain English, right? It's, all, it's almost as hard as HTML5 or HTML. And the part that Cascades doesn't love about Qt, well, there is one, that one, kind of, one such thing in every relationship, is that Cascades hates Qt GUI, right? Qt GUI is the UI framework of Qt, and Cascades basically replaces that. So if you're using Cascades to develop your application, you cannot use Qt GUI. You cannot mix them both. If you want to do Qt GUI, you have to spin off totally from Cascades and just do Qt using Qt GUI. So let's talk about tooling. All that API is great, but what kind of tools do we provide to make your life, make your life even easier? So this is what tooling looks like for a raw native application that is created in C or C++. Not very exciting, just a text editor, hopefully with some auto-completion. But for Cascades, the tooling looks completely different. It's night and day. On the left, we have the QML editor, where you write your QML code. And there, on the right, we have a live preview. It's extremely powerful and it's extremely handy to have something like that because as you change your QML, your live preview gets automatically updated. It's very useful for prototyping, right? And on the left, bottom left, we have the component library that gives you a quick reference of all the core UI components that ships with Cascades. And on the very right, we have a nice tree view because your QML can grow quite large and it's, it can get hard to navigate. So you can use, it's basically a tree structure, so it gets translated to a tree view where you can click and navigate through your QML very quickly and simply. One of the things we take granted about Cascades is how awesome its multi-threaded model is. Now, we all have ugly codes. Ugly in the sense that the code that our processor hogs. So the, that's represented, represented by the ugly face, of course. And you can throw any code you want in your Cascades application. But what's guaranteed is your application runs smoothly without any lag and jitter to the user. So if, you, if your code asks, what's the meaning of life? The answer that Cascades will give you is 60 frames per second. Just stop for a moment and think about that. 60 frames per second. Your application, can, via Cascades, can render at 60 frames per second in HD. So if you're not convinced yet why you should be using Cascades, please do. This is why. It's an awesome UI framework, and we're going to see it very soon when we do our live demos. It has great looking UI components, and it also gives you the flexibility to create your own custom components that you can reuse in your application, or you can even give it to someone else for reuse. It also, we also provide dedicated UI tooling, and the, and the part that I haven't mentioned so far is something called the Cascade Photoshop plugin. Using this plugin, a designer who is not a developer at all, but has Photoshop skills, can design the whole Cascades UI just in Photoshop and export that in a nice package that's, underst under that's understood by our IDE. And then the developer can import that file. And what does he get? He doesn't get a PSD file. He gets a QML file with the real button components, slider components, text boxes, and all the other Cascades core components in the QML already written for him. So it makes that great bridge between the designer and we, the developers. And all this results in a much more productive environment because it provides higher level APIs and all the platform services APIs are also provided in a cute flavored C++ API. Without further ado, 
Let's look at some samples. So why are samples important? We all know samples are important, but we have done some very careful brainstorming and thinking when we created these samples for you. And each sample is not just a random sample. They are meant for something specific. Each sample shows a specific feature of the platform that you can copy-paste the code from to your application. And samples are definitely quicker than reading documentation. In fact, they could be the documentation for developers because we hate reading docs. It also provides building blocks because you can copy-paste chunk of codes from the samples right into your application. There is no rights or privileges related to that. All right, so let's see some samples. The first sample I have is called Hello Cascades. This introduces you, it's, well, I cannot go on without showing you Hello World, right? That's what every platform has. This introduces you to label, an image view, and the doc layout system of the Cascades framework. Now I want to switch. Awesome. Okay, so here we go. So our hello world. It's very nice and simple, and I'm also going to show you the code for it. So what we have here is an image that is the bubble around the hello world text. And the hello world text is actually a label. And both of them are centered on the screen using the doc layout. Okay, so here's the code, and it's very simple. You create an image view, you create a label, you set the doc layout properties, and you're done. Moving on to our next sample, this, and this is my favorite, and I hope this will be your favorite as well. This introduces you to animations. Remember I talked about implicit animations? Well, that's all done for you out of the box for each control as you use them. However, Cascades also provides an animation framework that you can use to create any custom animations you want. And every single component in Cascades can be animated using this animation framework. And this sample introduces just that. It also introduces you to touch event, event handling and also introduces you to something called OpenAL, which is the audio API in native C. Not very nice looking, but it does its job. And it comes pre-bundled with the SDK. However, I don't recommend using OpenAL because we have simpler alternatives to OpenAL now in Cascades. So you can use the cute flavored Cascades APIs to playback audio or video. And I want to switch. So this is the pull my beard example. And the guy here is apparently a great great grandfather of one of the design wizards at TAT in Sweden. And apparently he's a very nice guy and he lets you pull his beard. For some reason we're not getting the sound out of this. Can you guys hear that? Can we get sound on it? It's a lot of fun. It's not doing it. I'm going to give it 10 more seconds. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Um, it's just not working. Sorry about that. It's a lot of fun when you can hear the audio. So he actually says thank you when you release the beard. How nice that is. So what's happening here, um, jokes aside, 
when I pull the bird, it's showing you how to handle touch events because I'm touching and dragging, right? And when I release it, it's actually animating the bird back into place. And it's also playing the sounds in the process. Switch. So here is what the code looks like. You define the animation, still in QML. You don't have to touch a single line of C++, but hey, if you're comfortable with C++, go for it. And then on the touch event, we're simply calling the animation when it's supposed to animate. And this shows you the image view that we used for the bird. And we are handling the on touch event right in QML to call a function that handles releasing the bird. So the next sample is called Cowbell. And this is an app that shows a picture of a cow with a bell on it. And you can poke the cow to make it moo, and you can also touch the bell to make it a belling sound. So it also shows you to handle rotation animations because the bell actually rotates at a pivot point. So you can set the pivot point. And it also shows you how to use the absolute layout to position the bell in the cow. Let me just quickly turn off the sound of my HDMI so that off. Okay. I will work this time. You can't hear it, can you? Okay, so basically you touch the bell and it animates at a pivot point using the rotate animation. And you can set the pivot point anywhere you want. And this is true for any Cascades components, right? You can have any image view, any buttons, do just that. So that's the power and flexibility that's provided by Cascades. So a quick, quick look at the code of the Cowbell sample. We're using an image view for the background as well as for the bell. And then we're calling the play sound method to play the sound. Now, this play sound method is actually implemented in C++ code. When you, look, when you import the sample, you look at it. And the beauty of QML and C++ is that you can call any C++ function from QML and vice versa. You can also access QML objects from C++ and call functions on them. So they work together very, very well. Next up is Lightning Crossfade. This application shows how to use this, the slider component, how to set up and register for its event listeners. Using layouts with several UI components on the screen, we have an image view and a slider, and do all of the above in both QML and C++. So by that, what we really mean is the same sample is available in two different versions, one version uses or does everything you see here in just QML. And the other version does that all in using just C++. So that shows you how you can use both to do anything you want. Sometimes it's just hard to find an app. Oops, wrong app. All right, let's take a look at it. So this is a picture. Actually, it's using two image views. And as I slide, it blends out the one on the top and blends in the other. So the picture is actually taken by one of the TAT guys when uh, on one morning he woke up really early and they had this thunderstorm. So he set up his tripod on the camera and then took the shot of a thunder and then he took a same shot from the same angle afterwards when the sky is clear. And then he created the sample. There is a story behind every sample. And at the same time, it also shows you something useful. So here's the code for lightning crossfade. We're using image views and a slider. 
we connect the slider signals to the image views so that as I slide, one image blends out and the other blends in, and you get this nice crossfade effect. Foreign windows. So it's a, this is a very important sample. I'll tell you why. Cascades uses OpenGL to render its UI. That's why it's so lightning fast. However, there are use cases for a Cascades application to get access to low-level OpenGL to render a portion of the screen in OpenGL. Right? A mapping application is a perfect example. If you want to create a map control or a 3D map view or a 3D art view, you need access to OpenGL and at the same time be able to use Cascades as your UI framework for other things on the screen. Foreign window, what it does is it, it essentially makes a hole in your Cascades window so that you can see through it down to the OpenGL layer. And once you board the hole, you can write OpenGL code and execute that right inside that foreign window. And that foreign window can be sized to any size you want, placed at anywhere on the screen. So it's extremely flexible in what it lets you to do. So let's take a look at it in action. So we have this little remote control here. These are all cascades, the on-off switch. It comes from cascades. But the black portion is where the foreign window will appear. As soon as I hit on, it actually loads a foreign window exactly at that place and shows you this, this white noise. So the white noise you're seeing is actually rendered using low-level OpenGL APIs. Extremely powerful. Um, and it makes sense for numerous applications out there that needs this kind of access. So creating a foreign window is extremely simple. Well, the OpenGL part is not, but creating the foreign window is. Because you still have to deal with OpenGL code, and hopefully you know what you're doing. So the foreign window is created in QML and sized and positioned in QML as well. And that gives you an ID. And in your C++ code, you just bind that ID to your OpenGL code so that it renders to that buffer. The next example is called Starship Settings. And this is also a very important sample because lots of you guys are going to use this, use the features that this sample showcases. So this sample basically shows you how to persist data. Every application today persists data, right? Um, be it the state of the screen, be it user data. You want to persist application state. You use the Q settings API that is super easy to use to store simple, raw, persistent data. And the Starship example does just that. So let's have a look at this Starship sample. You know, we all have been using radio buttons and sliders for like how long? I don't know, 15, 20 years. But this is the first time I truly fell in love with these. I mean, just look at it. It's so intuitive, right? As, as soon as you change something, it's animated. It just makes sense. It doesn't shock the user, doesn't surprise the user, doesn't cause any negative effect on the user's psychology. And the slider provides such great feedback as you slide it. It's just amazing. I mean, like I said, I finally fell in love with a slider. So the sample, this sample shows you how to persist data. So wherever I put the slider, if I close the application and relaunch it, it's going to remember where the slider was. And the code for it are, is also very simple. So you just have these two methods in this sample called get value for and set value for. You have an object name. It's a name and value pair. So you have an object name, and you have a value for that object. You can put any kind of C++ or, I mean, a cute object you want as the value. 
and a string as the name or the as the name of the key. And you call get value for to retrieve the data from queue settings, and you call save value for to save data in queue settings. If it's already there, it's going to replace the data. Now, the Cascades cookbook sample is pretty much a jack of all trades. It shows you almost everything, well, maybe not everything, but it tries to. Um, almost every single Cascades control that's out there. And it makes use of each and shows you how to use them, how to embed them in your application, and how to connect to them so that you get the user interaction events. There you go. So as you can see, it has image, views, buttons, sliders, inputs, label, picker, everything you can think of pretty much in Cascades. And it's, it's a very nice and handy sample application to have in your disposal because it's a quick reference to anything you want to use in Cascades. So let me pick some of my favorites here. Actually, my favorite is the animation. And Gary mentioned a little bit about this, that the animations in Cascades is completely asynchronous. You don't have to wait for the animation to complete. So even before the egg disappears from the screen, I can actually start bringing it back. So everything, the, the threading model of Cascades is very carefully designed to handle all that. And this is, not, this is true for not only implicit animations. Whatever explicit animations you define using the animation framework, it will also behave the same way. Let's pick something else. Stock curve is a nice one. Because this sample actually shows you the power of the animation framework. You can choose any animation curve in here, and it's going to animate according to that curve. So you take a, cute, you take a Cascades UI object, you define what animation curve you want to use or what stock curve you want to use, and then you just call animate, and it does it. So no hard work on the developer's part, all done by the animation framework. So I really encourage you to check out the uh, cookbook sample. Um, it really shows you an example of every single Cascades component that's out there. Now, moving a bit off from Cascades and show you how, the platforms, how some of the platform services are actually exposed to Cascades applications. Location Diagnostics is a sample app that's, a, that's also a Cascades application. And it uses the location API that is provided to you in a Qt-like C++ APIs. Whenever I say Qt-like C++ APIs, that really means it works very well with Qt, with Q objects, with signals and slots, and stuff like that. So the Location API demonstrates how to use the Location API of BlackBerry 10 to get GPS coordinate or to get coordinate based on wireless LAN or cell towers. <coughs> Some of the APIs are in the roadmap and will be available in the next beta release, hopefully. And they will include things like satellite information, geocoding, reverse geocoding, as well as maps. So let's have a look at the location, location API in this location diagnostic sample application. I don't have GPS here, so it may not work, but we'll try. Well, you get the idea. So once you, once you hit start updates, it actually starts the location engine. And then once it gets a fix, it shows you all the different attributes that are bound to your location. Things like latitude, longitude, altitude, uh, timestamps, and the method it's got computed as well. And the best part is we're simplifying this API by miles compared to BlackBerry Java. You don't have to specify a lot of the um, setup for the to use the location API. All you need to do is pretty much, I want a location, get me the best fix you can at this time. 
and the location API goes out, triggers all sources, and whichever comes first and comes first as best gives you that location in return. The last sample I have is called the invocation sample. Now, invocation framework is a very important framework that is part of the core experience of BlackBerry 10. Come launch, it's going to be hard to find an app that does not take advantage of this invocation framework because this is the framework that really allows you to go beyond your application and leverage other applications to do some task that your application doesn't do. However, it makes total sense to trigger that task from your application. So this framework introduces you to invoke invocations, querying for invocations, as well as using invocation right in your application menu. So let's have a look at this. So as part of the invocation, you, you select any type of application that you want to invoke, and you select an action, for example, BB action open, says open something, and you select a MIME type, which is image slash PNG in this case, and you have the, you have the data for the image. Um, I have test data here, but that's not an image. But I can still show you that it actually invokes an application that can handle that invocation. So this application registered to handle that kind of invocation that says open, PNG content, and that's why this application got invoked from that application. Now, remember the BlackBerry flow concept. See how it slides in and gives the user a cinematic experience without any blocks or dialogues? That's what BlackBerry flow is about, right? An invocation framework forms a core part of it. So here's the code for invocation framework sample. You just create an invocation request, and you say invoke with these few lines of code. And on the target application side, the target application registers with the invocation framework, and that's why the target gets invoked. So where do you get these samples? All these samples are great to reuse in your application. But to get those sample applications, they're all open sourced. So you can go to github.com slash BlackBerry and fork our repository, contribute to the samples, use the samples, abuse the samples, whatever you want to do. You can also find the samples in our developer website. That's at developer.blackberry.com. And that wraps it up. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the next five minutes or so. Questions, guys? Yes? So, how do you, let's say, how do you switch from one page to another if I'm using it correctly? So, I have one page set up to display the picture, then the next page is to display the video. How do I go from page one to page two? So, for that, what you have to use is something called a navigation pane. So, in a navigation pane, it works like a stack of pages or abstract panes, which, which is inherited by pages. And then you can push as many abstract panes uh, onto the navigation, stack, navigation pane and then nav let the user navigate between the two or more pages. Yes? OK, so the question is, when you invoke another application, and the new application gets, sli gets slided in to the screen. And how, the user, how does the user go back to the previous application? Well, they can go back by doing a horizontal swipe to switch to the other applications, because it's completely multitasking. And, um, or the user can just close the application, or the application can close, it, it's close, close, close itself when it's done with the task. Does that answer your question? Yes? Um, what kind of plugin? So the question is, is it possible to, use cas to write Cascades plugins? What kind of plugins are you referring to?
Okay, I see what you're saying. So this is exactly what custom components are. You can create custom components using any of the core components, and you can lay it out inside the custom component as, as, um, as you wish. So you have full flexibility down there. Uh, to go back to your invocation question, there is another type of invocation that's called cards. So what cards do is it does not actually invoke the, app, the target application in a new window. Instead, it borrows a page or screen from the target and slides right into the calling application. And with cards, there are tons of uh, gestures that you can do. You can peek back. You can slide the card out. You can also slide the card in if you're done peeking and close it as well. So cards is very flexible and powerful, which is supposed to be in the next beta release. Yes? Um, sorry, say that again? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, sorry. So the question was, uh, can you, what version of C++ uh, Qt supports or Cascade supports? Any other question? Sorry, I have blinding lights here. Can't really see you. Yes? Um, we're definitely thinking about it. It's not going to be available. Probably not going to be for launch. But we're definitely thinking about it. But until then, um, BlackBerry 10 is a completely multitasking environment uh, backed by QNX. And you can always minimize your application, and the application actually keeps running in the background in that way. But it cannot be completely hidden out from the user. The user will have some sense, of, some sense that the application is still running. Yes, last question here. Okay, so the question is, uh, what different systems the development, development tools are available? They're available for Windows, Mac, and I believe they're also available for Linux. Um, so pretty much everybody is covered. You use one of them? Cool, you're covered. Okay, last one. Sorry, Raul, I'm taking the break away from you. Oh, I'm next. Okay, sorry. So for the question is, is signals and slots blocking? Is, is that the question? No. What's the second question? Or in other words, can an progress Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the question is whether signals and slots are blocking. The answer is no. Signals and slots are completely asynchronous. Uh, so once you connect your signals with your slot, um, as there could be... 10 signals coming to your slots um, asynchronously. So it doesn't matter. It's, uh, every, single signal, every single signal has its own asynchronous model. All right, uh, with that, that wraps up the Cascades fundamentals and sample applications. Thank you very much. Five minutes break.